invite you to remain standing out of respect for the gospel reading today. Our gospel lesson, it comes from the Gospel of Luke, the 13th chapter. Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and a woman was there who had been disabled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not stand up straight. When he saw her, Jesus called her to him and said, Woman, you are set free from your sickness. He placed his hands on her, and she straightened up at once and praised God. The synagogue leader, incensed that Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, responded, There are six days during which work is permitted, Come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath day. The Lord replied, Hypocrites, don't each of you on the Sabbath untie your ox or donkey from its stall and lead it to get a drink? Then isn't it necessary that this woman, a daughter of Abraham, bound by Satan for 18 long years, be set free from her bondage on the Sabbath day. When he said these things, all his opponents were put to shame. But all those in the crowd rejoiced at the extraordinary things he was doing. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. The story is told about a burglar who stalked a neighborhood watching homes as they were left unguarded by the people leaving for vacation. He watched carefully as one family in particular loaded up their suitcases into the back of their car and departed. He waited until it was dark. And then he approached the house by the front door, and he rang the bell just to be sure that everybody was out of the house. There was no answer. So the burglar neatly picked the lock very discreetly, and he let himself in to the house. He called out in the darkness, Is anybody home? And he was stunned when he heard this voice reply, I see you, and Jesus sees you. He was stunned. He decided to call out one more time, Who's there? And again the voice came back, I see you, and Jesus sees you. The burglar couldn't believe it. He switched on his little flashlight to look around. Sounded like a small voice, must be a child they left home alone. He used his flashlight and searched around for where that voice had come from. And his eyes revealed to him a caged parrot reciting those words. I see you, and Jesus sees you. Relieved, put his flashlight away, flipped on the big light so he could see what it was he wanted to take from this house that he was robbing. And when he turned on those big lights, right beneath that parrot's cage, he saw a Doberman pincher. <laughs> and then the parrot said, Attack, Jesus, attack! <laughs> I don't know why somebody would name their dog Jesus. But all joking aside, the reality is Jesus does see us. He sees the real us all of the time. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, sees each and every one of us for who we really are. Unfortunately, by nature, we all have assumptions about ourselves and about other people. 
and we use collective labels for other people and even sometimes for ourselves. We say things like that old man or that white woman or that racist, that alcoholic, that politician, that attorney, that disabled child. And those labels, no matter what they are, they prevent us from appreciating the uniqueness of every individual that we meet. So I am starting a sermon series today entitled, I See You. Throughout this sermon series, as you notice on your bulletin, we're going to be looking at biblical stories that will help us learn better how to listen to one another, how to see other people, how to hear their stories and appreciate every individual for the unique and valued person and gift that God has created that person to be. I often tell people when I'm conducting a funeral or memorial service that each and every one of us is a gift from God to the rest of humanity, and it is up to each and every one of us to unwrap the gift of the people that we meet so that we know the giftedness of each other in this world. So I want to start out with the story that I just read for us from Luke's Gospel. Luke is the only Gospel writer who records this particular story. In some ways, I believe that Luke, being a physician, was particularly interested in this story of healing, seeing someone who needed healing in their life. But Luke does not go into a lot of detail about this woman. For instance, he doesn't even tell us her name. He doesn't tell us anything about her family background. He doesn't tell us whether she's rich or whether she's poor. What he does tell us is that she has this condition that has caused her to be bent over for 18 long years. And the implication is that she was not born that way. Something happened to her in life that weighed her down and bent her over. Maybe it was a calcium deficiency. Maybe it was a spinal injury. But maybe it was just the weight of life. All of us in life tend to feel weighted down at times and bent over by the pressure of life upon us, the difficulties that we go through. You talk about people being downtrodden as the weight and the stress of life wears them down under the weight that is upon their shoulders. We don't know what caused this woman to be bent over. We simply know that she had some kind of spirit that crippled her. And we also know that despite this affliction, that she came to the synagogue to worship God. She came on the Sabbath to worship her Lord. Because of her particular ailment of being bent over, I want you to picture her in your eyes. Bent over, her eyes were always looking down. She couldn't look people straight in the eye. She missed the beautiful sky that I saw on my way to church today. She missed seeing the birds fly up in the sky. She missed seeing beautiful rainbows projected over the landscape. Can you imagine what life was like for her? Always looking down, always seeing people's feet instead of people's eyes. Always seeing the doorsteps rather than the doorknobs of people's houses. She recognized the street she was on by the ditches on the side of the road instead of by the landmarks and the names of the streets. 
But you know, God is gracious. Because even though she could only look downward in this marvelous creation, God has placed flowers and daffodils low down so that she could see some beauty in this world. She could see the faces of little children who were below her eye level. But this woman was never able to look at any other adult face to face, eye to eye, or gaze at the beauty of a starry, starry night. This bent over woman, not able to look at other people, was also not seen by other people. And yet verse 12 of this 13th chapter tells us something remarkable. Jesus in the, is in the midst of teaching in the synagogue and he stops because he sees her. Something about her drew Jesus' attention and he saw her. Now, certainly a lot of people in that synagogue that day saw her coming in. They noticed that this bent over woman was walking into the synagogue. But nobody saw her the same way Jesus did. They would step to a side so that they wouldn't bump into her, knowing that she couldn't see them and might bump into them. You know, it's a sad commentary to me that Luke doesn't even give us her name. He just calls her the crippled woman, the bent over woman. It reminds me how much society dehumanizes us and when we allow this to happen, how we fail to see our own worth before God. This woman, in the synagogue ruler's opinion, was only a woman. She had little value. And the Mosaic law was more important to him than this woman's life. He discarded her and her need for healing by telling her, it's the Sabbath, come back on another day. The law is more important than you are. She became to him like an object, like a tree rather than a person. Just something to walk around and to navigate around, something that was in his way. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been treed by anybody? Treated like you were just a tree? People who walked by you and didn't even notice you, didn't speak to you, treated you like you were an object. Have you ever been at a reception talking with someone and you became aware of the fact that the person wasn't really listening to your side of the conversation? They were kind of looking over your shoulder at somebody else who might be more important than you are and they wanted to get over there and talk to that person. I see some smirks. Y'all know what I'm talking about. That's being treated, treated as less than. It hurts to be treated. It hurts to be treated like a second-class citizen. Have you ever heard someone say, oh, she's just a waitress, don't mind her? You know, hostesses and waitresses often come to your table and tell you their name. Do you remember their name and call them by name? Do you treat them as a person or just as a waitress, someone serving you? Do you treat them? When you see someone who is a parking lot attendant at these famous football games that we go to, do you just see the color of their skin and not notice their name? Do you just see their age? and not ask them who they are. Jesus always sees the individual. When he saw crowds, he had compassions upon the crowds because he saw the individuals and he saw their needs. And in this synagogue, Jesus really sees this woman for who she is. 
He empathized with her pain. He said to himself, ah, there is one of my siblings who is hurting and is in need of help. What a shame that she should be suffering for all these years, 18 years. And he says she has been afflicted by Satan and she needs to be freed and cured from all that is weighing her down. You see, unlike society, Jesus didn't define her in terms of her status, in terms of her gender, or in terms of her physical appearance. He didn't define her by anything other than her true identity. For he calls her a daughter of Abraham. A daughter of Abraham. In other words, he sees her true identity as one who was created and named and claimed by God. One to be loved, one who is important, one who is special, one who is unique, one who has purpose and is a gift to this world. And Luke tells us that when Jesus identified her as a daughter of Abraham, claiming for her her true identity... She claimed that for herself. And she rejoiced and straightened up knowing who she was, having pride in herself, knowing that she was more than what other people viewed her to be. Now let me make this clear. This story is told by Luke to help us understand that Jesus is the Messiah. That's the reason Luke is telling this story. But there's another lesson here as well. And I think Jesus would have us learn this important lesson. A lesson that he came to teach us and model for us. We cannot all be healers. Touch people with bent over backs from osteoporosis and make them stand up straight again. But we can all treat others with love and respect and see them for who they really are, as people of worth in the eyes of God and of the rest of humanity. Jesus provided for this woman what no one else could have given her, a whole body. He healed her. He healed her. But not just her physical self, he also healed her spirit. He helped to provide for her some dignity and celebrate with her the beauty of her life. As I think about the way that we look at people, I often believe we have a shallowness about it. I see people who often pass one another on the street, in schools, in offices, and they ask people how they're doing, but they don't pause long enough to listen to hear their story of how they really are doing. They want the person to just say, fine, it was a nicety. It's a social thing that you do. Hey, how are you today? Please don't ask that if you don't really want to hear. If you don't have time to listen. Really see one another. Take an interest in those around you. Too often... We see only what we want to see. There was an old woman who died in a geriatric ward of a small hospital near Dundee, Scotland. And it was felt that she had nothing left of any value in her possessions. No one knew of any family members to come and collect her possessions. So the nurses started going through her meager possessions after she passed away. And among her possessions, they found a little poem that she had written. Its quality and its content so impressed those nurses that they made copies of it and they passed it around to all of the other nurses in that nursing home. They distributed it to every nurse that they knew. And those nurses passed that poem on to other friends of theirs. And since that time... That poem has appeared in the Christian edition of a news magazine in Northern Ireland, Ireland for the Association of Mental Health. 
Some of you may have heard this poem before. This little old Scottish lady with nothing much left to give this world has written an eloquent poem as a gift to all of us to help us begin to see people with the eyes of Jesus. Here's her poem. What do you see, nurses? What do you see? What are you thinking when you look at me? A crabby old woman and not very wise, uncertain of habit with faraway eyes, who dribbles her food and makes no reply when you say in a loud voice, I do wish you'd try, who seems not to notice the things that you do and forever is losing a stocking or a shoe, who resisting or not lets you do what you will with bathing and feeding the long day to fill. Is that what you're thinking? Is that what you see? Then open your eyes, nurse, because you're not looking at me. I'll tell you who I am as I sit here so still, as I do your bidding and as I eat at your will. I'm a small child of ten with a father and mother, brothers and sisters who love one another. I'm a young girl of 16 with wings on her feet, dreaming that soon her true lover shall meet. A bride soon at 20, my heart gives a leap, remembering the vows that I promised to keep. At 25 now, I have young of my own who need me to guide them and provide a secure home. A woman of 30, my young are now grown fast, bound to each other with ties that should last. At 40, my young sons have grown and are gone, but my man's beside me to see that I don't mourn. At 50, once more, babies play round my knee, and again we know children, my loved one and me. Dark days are upon me. My husband is dead. I look at the future, and I shudder with dread. For my young are all rearing young of their own, and I think of the years and the love that I've known. Through all of these years, God is great, and God has been faithful. I am now an old woman, and nature is cruel. Tis its jest to make old age look like a fool. You see, the body, it crumbles. Grace and vigor depart. And there is now a stone where I once had a heart. But inside this old carcass, a young girl still dwells. And now and again, my battered heart swells. I remember the joys. I remember the pain, and I'm loving and living them all over again. I think of the years, all too few, gone too fast, and accept the stark fact that nothing can last. So open your eyes, nurse. Open and see. Not a crabby old woman. Look closer and see me. That poem has stuck with me for years. And particularly now that my mother is aging and I watch her reflecting upon her life and repeating herself and living over and over again her life's events. And I notice how other people treat her as well. An old senile woman who just repeats herself and doesn't know anything anymore. Open our eyes, Lord, and help us to see one another with the eyes of Jesus. You know, I've learned if you talk to anybody long enough, you'll find out that everyone has a heartache or heart experience in life. If we spend the time listening to others, we can begin to see them with the eyes of Jesus.
May it be so for you and for me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.